department will be using for their presentation. We have the PowerPoint that the uh, drone students will be using. We deleted and postponed a recommendation for um, Ms. Carrie John. We'll see that next week. Um, we also added a leave request for Rachel Morton, a leave request for Rita Butcher. Um, we revised the percentages in 7B, number seven, the advisor student activism, and number eight, advisor DECA financial, um, as they were typed as 4.8, when it's actually 4.4, so there's a typographical error. Um, we have also deleted Sue Knopper as a summer school scheme coordinator um, because the siphon identified was incorrect. That will come up next week. And we added uh, an email from Mrs. Kathleen Stevens to the notes, and we deleted the executive session that was kind of scheduled for uh, this year. Okay, and we need a motion to approve the agenda with all the chiefs. Motion. Second. Motion by Dale, second by Brad. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I should also note too that uh, Mr. John is soon absent tonight from the board. Okay. We'll move on to our uh, recognitions and presentations. First, we have a presentation from the music department. Terrific. I believe you have Mrs. Sarah Stani. There she is. All right. Anyway, I'm going to share with you too. Steve. So we just want to take the opportunity to say thank you, first of all, to me for inviting us to be able to talk about our department. We're very passionate about what we do. So thank you so much for inviting us. Um, we were asked to discuss the numbers of participation that we have. As you can see, in sixth and seventh grade, the numbers aren't very high. And those are our COVID kids. Those are the kids that would have started banning, co banning course during the COVID years. And we just couldn't get the interest because there was no way to get the interest. They were at home virtually. It was pretty much impossible. But now we have the fourth and fifth grade who have now started as normal school years. And we can see what a normal numbers would mostly look like. Also, this is the trends in the past five years. As you can see, those older, older grades, we, we got a hit from COVID. This is a nationwide problem in all band and band and chorus departments. But as you can see with those younger generations, we're coming back even stronger than we were before COVID. Um, just to discuss some of the, how it starts out. First of all, we, when I first started, kindergarten is where we started with music, but we've extended that to the UBK program. So that's really exciting to have Andrew working with them on that. And we have general music for kids, UBK through seventh grade. So they receive music once or twice out of the six day cycle. Then once you come over to Seneca Intermediate, you have that opportunity to join chorus and band. Um, students currently have uh, a lesson, one pull out lesson a week for 30 minutes or 40 minutes, depending on what grade you're in. Um, and they rehearse for band in fourth and fifth grade, uh, sixth and seventh daily currently. Um, then you can start um, continuing into eighth grade and take either a symphonic band, concert band, mixed chorus, or select chorus. Other course offerings, because not everybody wants to be a performer. Not everybody loves the stage and likes to get in front of people. So, but they're still interested in music and they still want to play an instrument. So we have intro to piano and intro to guitar. And uh, from what my understanding is this next year, the interest in that is it's even higher than what we have right now. And those kids love coming down to the chorus room. We hear those electric guitars and this, they're on the set and they're jamming down there. Music theory, which is um, especially important for those kids interested in going to college for music. Um, so you get into the, the very dry nature of your scales, aural skills, all of that um, is usually offered every other year. Next year, um, it is going to be through uh, accreditation through JCC that Daryl Warren has worked really hard to get. So we're super excited for those students to be able to get college credit for music theory. Competitions. Prior to COVID, um, kids were going to Darien Lake. They brought that back finally this year. They have that up and running at Darien Lake. So the sixth and seventh grade band, Ms. Slungershausen is taking them. They're super excited about that. 
and Daryl is taking the symphonic band. Concert band isn't going there this year because they went to Philadelphia. We'll talk about that in just a second. But the mix and select course also um, usually goes to Daring Lake and they'll be returning next year. They're not going this year. The concert band, which is our top performers, small band, however, they are phenomenal students. Oh my gosh, they're so talented. They went to Philadelphia several weeks ago. They were the only one in their class at first. So they got bumped up a class going against a much bigger school district and they came in first place. They got silver distinction. If they got to stay in their class, they would have been gold. So they sort of mentally say they're gold, okay? <laughs> but they did place um, first place and they got a silver distinction for that. So we're super excited, so proud of them. They performed those pieces in their last concert in March, but you'll be able to see their big plaque and everything if you come to their concert, which is next Tuesday on board, on the, on the boat, okay? Um, different festivals. We have all county, which any of our students in grades four through 12 can participate in. Um, so we send kids for chorus this year from fourth and fifth grade. Um, same with our bands um, as well. We were able to host it this year here in Salamanca. And I can say it's one of the favorite sites for most people in the county to come to. And then we have um, area all state. We had Mitchell Schnaufer and Matthew Schnaufer were both um, selected for that, and there was an alternate Johnny Madison. Mitchell also went to Allstate Conference, as well as All Eastern. These are like your postseason things in your sports. For us, this is our postseason. This is a very elite performer to be able to make it to All Eastern. And then Nisbeta Honor Band, he, Mitchell was also part of, and Matthew was an alternate for it. So. We have some very high high level performing musicians in our in our high school band. This is not particularly just um, this is not I wouldn't say the music department, but is run by the music department. So other activities that they can be a part of after school is jazz band run by Daryl Warren, pep band which they um, come to some of the football games as well as basketball games, um, the musical pit. Um, 11 students, hits aren't usually for the musicals, a huge ensemble. And the music for hits are extremely difficult. That is college level playing. That is no joke being able to play that stuff. To have 11 students that would have been able to play in that musical pit is phenomenal. We've had a few over my years, this would have been the most ever. And drama club, oh my gosh. The participation in that has skyrocketed this year. Those younger, these fourth, fifth, sixth graders are what is going to be the foundation of our program again. So we're excited to see where they, where they take us. We do have a music honor society for the high school students to be able to, to join, which is called Triam. Triam is an honor society where you have to have high academics. You have to be able to play at a high level. You have to have good character and a lot of volunteer hours and go into it once we're accepted into it. Some community events that we put on every year is the fourth and fifth grade chorus and world of percussion, which I take control of. Um, we do the light up the night parade for the Christmas parade. And when I do world of percussion, I had to take a leave of absence from that because of COVID. We do bucket drumming at the Falling Leaves Festival Parade. The high school chorus takes on the casino tree lighting every year. And the six, seven band does Veterans Day performances at the American Legion. Then the Memorial Day service and the flag day performance at the high school flagpole. And the Veterans Day Assembly at the high school is always played by our high school bands. Some of the kids also don't just stick to here at school, they go into other outside community organizations. So we have some of our kids performing in the Bradford Community Theater, with the South Town's Youth Orchestra, the community bands, and uh, the Olean Community Theater. The facility use. This was really important to mention. No, that is not a facility. We do not have those curtains, but <laughs> we think it's just as great, okay? <laughs> we do have the largest auditorium in Cat County. It is, when we go to other schools that have auditoriums for all county, we're not all rehearsing either on the stage or in an acoustically appropriate room. 
I can tell you the uh, elementary band usually is in a gym practicing for <laughs> two days. Just loud. We have such a great setup here. We can be in the chorus room, the band room, and on the stage. Everyone loves coming here. It's some of their favorites. This weekend, um, we have over 830 plus students attending Solo Festival here. Daryl Warren is the festival chairperson for it. As we were doing stickers on all of those adjudicated sheets before we came down here, we have uh, schools from Erie County, Cattaraugus, Chautauqua, Allegheny, maybe. So they're coming from all, I mean, Williamsville, everywhere is coming down here. So we're super excited for them to be able to see what we have to offer our students here. And if you hadn't been at many of my concerts already when I preached this before or you're new to the board, this is my opportunity I have to say the benefits of band and chorus being in part of these ensembles helps to develop language and reasoning, mastery of memorization, learning to improve your work. And that's a tough one. Students are like, yeah, I got my notes right. Yeah, I got my rhythm right. I'm good. No, there's always something more. There's no such thing as a perfect performance. And to have to constantly improve your work, that carries over into the classroom as well. Increased coordination, emotional development, as you can see, the list goes on. And I even shortened it <laughs> for you. But I think the most significant thing to remember is music students score better in math, science, and English than their non-musical peers. The latest study, which was of 2012, and there were so many more before that, was, and this is a quote from it, says, students who participated in music scored an average of 31 points above average in reading, 23 points above average in math, and 31 points above average in writing. So as that top 10 got announced last week, and I wrote all of them down because I was watching live in my office, all 10 of those kids have been in this music program. All 10 of those kids were band students. Some leave for different reasons, whether it's a focus in the, where their career path is gonna be for certain classes, but they all started out here and they were all in up until high school and through most of high school, some still currently are. So I think we strongly believe that because we had those kids since fourth or fifth grade, we had them rehearsing every single day so that we could accommodate their different lifestyles at home and not being able to practice there for some of them. But we brought that to give them what they needed here. We felt like we have a small part in them being a part of that top 10 list. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. That was a great uh, presentation. I know sometimes we focus a lot on course academics and athletics and you kind of forget theater and music. And well, it's nice to be reminded and to see where the program has grown and what a great job you guys are doing. So thank you. Next, we'll move on to our uh, drone suite. All right. Um, then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ms. Jackson and Barry. Are you are terrific, outstanding. First of all, I want to thank you for the privilege to come and talk to you tonight. Over the past four or five months, we've been talking back and forth. In March, we had a conference about how to get recreation ideas into the city. I'm on the recreation board and the chairman. And for those of you who don't know, I'm also a city council member. Um, so we, I got to thinking, what can we do? How can we take technology that's in the classroom and bring it outside for kids to play? So with the help of Mr. Schnaufner and Ms. Johnson and Mr. Howard, we created a proposal for you guys to understand. And tomorrow we'll be inviting it to the city council to create a drone obstacle course. Um, Cheryl can tell you more about it, but we designed it. The kids helped. They got excited about it, and they ran with it. They were flying drones throughout the hall, trying to figure out how far apart. And, um, I think it's a good idea. We went and looked online, and there's not one within 300 miles of it. So it's something that could bring people in. Um, it's good for the kids. We take technology, bring it outside. And now they're getting out in the summer. They're having fun outside. So that's part of what we're trying to do. And we also figured out with possibly the um, 
fire department could use it for training, police department, whatever group that needs it. Um, when they need to do their drone recertifications, they've got them something to practice. And so far, we've got everything in place. So I'm just coming to you. I want to thank the school for allowing us to work together. It's been awesome just to come up with the idea and then watch the kids build on it. Um, and the computer also said that they can use this for their high school credits, with participation in government, which is awesome. Because then we can get everybody in one place doing one thing. And the kids will be going from concept to designing <coughs> it and actually putting it, going up and marking the field where it's going to be going. So they're going to get all the concepts and how it fits. And we're proposing it to the council tomorrow. That it'll be the Elm Street playground. It's a playground that doesn't have a lot of, has a lot of land, but not a lot of good use. So we're trying to do that right now. Now, turn this over to the council. And thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So we've had, a, it's been a very fun year teaching the drone course. The first half of the year was working with the kids to get them. Uh, part 107 FAA certified to fly drones commercially. And we have six students who passed their exam and they now have the little cards in their wallet and they can fly the big drones and they can charge money for their work. Um, so now the second half of the year, if we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the second half of the year, we're now starting to use the drones. But when Barry came and asked us if we would help them come up with a little drone car, we had to pull out the, the old drones, the practice drones, and the kids got really spoiled flying the big drones. So I do have two of my pilots here. I'm going to ask Adam to come on down and just give you a little demonstration. So we figure most people who would come to this would have a drone of about this quality, you know, maybe the, the top quality that they would come with. And I'm, I'm going to set this up right in the middle here. Um, they're not going to come with, with the big, expensive thousands of dollar drones. They're going to come with the little fun drones. I know that's going to say, we, Adam, Adam's my top gun student. So, so before you fly here, the, uh, Mr. Howard, Sean Howard, had, and I think Barry had come up with a bunch of different ideas of obstacles that kids could fly through. And you can see on the map, they're just kind of sketched out. And Sean Howard had drawn them out for us in one of his CAD programs. And what we were trying to figure out is what size, like of the hoops and what size of openings between the obstacles really are going to be good for a beginner and intermediate and then eventually an advanced. So this is, we had hoops like this set up all over the steam room. Let's, we're gonna put you under pressure here. Yeah. So these are top drones to fly. Um, you would have to keep them level in all different activities, the X, Y, and Z axis. You can see in these things actually know what X, Y, and Z. If we wanted to fall. And so we had, yeah, I mean, so going through the hoops. <laughs> 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 yeah. But just kind of a fun place for if kids want to come and test their skills. Nice community gathering. One of the things I hadn't thought of that very thought of, um, it's a challenge to land. <laughs> It's a challenge to land the drone like on a small area. So we had talked about having platforms. And Barry said we can't do that because birds will make nests on them. So we scrapped that idea. And you can see it's just a series of little obstacles. And we spread them out over the area. Some of them are going to be turning with the wind. So you'll have an actual moving obstacle. Uh, two of them will be able to fly your drone and then drop down into a barrel. So you're going to lose sight of your drone, drone for a few minutes, and then when it comes back down, you're going to keep out. We did want to have them fly through a barrel, and the class said, well, what if it breaks down, we can't get it up. So this whole park will be about 20 feet up in the air, which changes your perspective to what the kids would be doing normally. So they're not always going to be flying along the ground. They're going to be flying up. So we want to make it so something that they would have to learn that's 
the difference. That depth really perception is really tough when they get up in the air. So a lot of these things are being building and uh, changing. Some are really unchanged, floating in the air. Um, so it's going to be challenging, very challenging. So is it going to have the identifications like uh, on skiing where you have the green circle? I don't know if that's written in here. No, it's not the poster. Um, Someone Hawkins is going to do a poster for us on the skill level. People will do this and do this. We haven't quite gotten that far with it, but um, you'll be able to have a skill level that you can be able to understand what people could learn. And we'll have a start and a stop, start and stop for it. So I think it's going to be really good. Something that's going to be bringing the kids out. Well, it's a unique idea. So this. This was one of the projects that we've done, and I just wanted to show you um, on the next slide, please. This is um, another project that we've just kind of been dabbling with. It's, it's not a level of drones that has been explored much here at the school. And we took um, Matt Schnauker, met me out at Surgeon Point, his mom brought him out, and we did a flyover um, at the marina you can see the break wall that's being completely taken down and rebuilt. But this construction company had to build a road to get out to that point. So this area that's kind of a little bit discolored there, that's a different picture. And so Matt did a flyover on the drone. He mapped out where he wanted the drone to fly absolutely terrifying. He hit fly, it goes up in the air and it does its mission without us flying it. And it came back and we downloaded the pictures and he put it into the software drone to map. And Marcy was fantastic at helping us get that all uploaded. And this is the first map day that Matt has made with the drone to map software. And for the contractor to get to see up above what it looks like. He's just absolutely thrilled to take a look. I just went through a training today and these dirt piles are the sand piles here. I'm just learning how to fly over those. And then you can calculate the cubic yards of material in there, of the drone. So these are all kind of future projects that we will be able to expose the kids to. And Drone pilots, licensed drone pilots, they're making anywhere between $80,000 and $250,000 a year. And, you know, that's without a college education, that's just getting the pilot's license. So having these higher level skills um, is going to put them up in that higher price range. And then we did also just get a call from the town of Evans. They want a 10 second video clip of the shores. Um, that, that border the town of Evans that they want to use. So we're working out um, what exactly we would charge them. So that's kind of where we are with the drone program. We appreciate the funding. So how many schools around here have a drone program? I don't know. I wish I had that number. I mean, I, I Not at this level. Many. Not many. We were the first. Um, at least that we know even in New York State to offer it to high school students, but that was several years ago. We've had several districts who have come in to see what we do. Um, I know of several that are in the middle of the state around the Syracuse area that I, I run into one superintendent there a few times a year. And um, you know, he talks about coming here, seeing what we did. They mimic that program there and it's a pretty prolific program there. So um, but it is not, this isn't something that's all over the place right now. What about the accreditation? Getting the getting their license. Yeah. Yeah. We're still it's in a handful. Yeah. So, I mean, there's very few yeah. schools that are very, very good. Um, wow. We're it's Exciting. it's about two hundred dollars to sit for the test. And I think that's a roadblock for a lot of districts and a lot of students. That was all. Thank you. I think it's important to note what can happen when we have different government agencies that work together. And we're very fortunate here that we have several employees that are both very active with the city um, and then also exceptionally active in leadership roles, both with the city. And then we have leaders uh, within the Seneca Nation. And that really helps us to 
pool our resources, coordinate the efforts that are happening, and do some really great things for our students as well as for the community. So this is really a credit to everybody that's involved. So thank you. That is awesome. I love when we can work together and do good things. Um, next, we have our NISCA award capabilities. Yes, we do. So the district spends um, a considerable amount of uh, resources uh, on professional development. And I think it's important to recognize when um, our leadership team, which you know at the highest level is our school board, um, partakes in professional development in a variety of different ways. And it, at this point in time, it is my honor to present uh, one of our board trustees, Mr. Brad Early, um, with a certificate of achievement from the New York State School Boards Association for uh, leadership development training, which has uh, accumulated to 75 points. Congratulations. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations, Brad. Uh, next, we have our uh, budget hearing presentation. Hey, Marcy. <laughs> I got just Marcy's going to present on my behalf. <laughs> And here's the budget. Thanks, number great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, what happened? Okay. So I didn't put it last time, so I can actually see what I'm looking at. So we're starting out with revenues. Um, as you can see, state aid is the, the largest part of our, our budget. Included in the state aid is a $3 million increase in foundation aid to get us up to what we should have been receiving in foundation aid for the last couple of years. Along with that increase includes additional reporting requirements for myself, Tiffany and Mark. Yay. Um, in addition to that, um, state aid, we have impact aid. We're using about 10% of that. Indigenous, about 25% of our um, revenues are indigenous and that's from our tuition and transportation contracts. And then the use of fund balance reserves is about 8% miscellaneous and tax related are both little piddly amounts in there <laughs> to fill up things. The miscellaneous, the large increase in that is due to two things. One, the inclusion of additional interest earnings because we're earning um, such higher rates now. And secondly, the inclusion of the exclusivity fee um, coming in from the casino to the state to the city back to us. So here's the details on the state aid. You can see um, we actually get two notifications of this. And when we had to approve the budget at the last meeting, we didn't know what our final allocation was going to be because the state had not approved their budget. Generally, they are approved on April 1st and we have to approve by April 24th, but they just approved it like last week, I think a week ago today. Uh, so our original um, basic formula or foundation aid was projected at 20.3 million, and that's actually what it ended up being. So the couple differences, we ended up getting uh, $1,682 more than we were originally told in March when those numbers came out. It's just a little bit of differences in our public and private excess costs, our transportation, our hardware and technology um, funding and in textbooks. So thankfully it wasn't a whole lot of changes. So same numbers, just in different format, showing you that the foundation aid is 74% of our state aid revenue, which you know makes sense that it's called foundation because it's the foundation of our, of our aid as well. The other largest percent is BOCES aid, which is aid that we receive back on all of the BOCES services that we um, use every year. And the building aid at $2.3 million is the 98% building aid that we get back on any uh, projects that we have. So tax-related revenues, <clears throat> again, impact aid, that's the largest piece of it, is the 93%. And then the levy is, again, $250,000. Exclusivity at one hundred and forty, dollars and interest on unpaid taxes is about $500. Miscellaneous revenues, this is all the other stuff that really, um, it changes from year to year. I have $750,000 in interest earnings in there. I think last year it was like 35,000, maybe even 15. 
So you can see it's a huge difference in the interest earnings that we're receiving nowadays versus um, before. Hopefully it continues that way and we don't take the plunge like, like we have. The other largest piece, two largest pieces in there is um, $200,000 for a refund of prior year expenses from BOCES. If you don't understand, BOCES is a not-for-profit, so any profit that they make sort of at the end of the year, any revenues that they receive above their expenditures has to be given back to the component school districts. And then the other piece, the 110,000 other services for districts and government, um, CSE, or not CSE, special ed produces a lot of services for CPSE, for the preschool kids, uh, for testing, for speech and PT and OT and all that other good stuff and provide those different therapies to those little kiddos uh, through the county and then the county pays us back for that. That's a nutshell of miscellaneous. Uh -oh. So the use of fund balance, we're going to pull in $3 million of our fund balance to cover um, expenditures. We're going to use four of our reserves, which is the ERS, the unemployment, technology, and workers' comp, those are all by our policy. We input so much money every year, we take out so much money every year, and we just continue to keep, keep growing those pots little by little to cover the increases in costs that we have from year to year. Again, tuition and transportation from Native American, aka Indigenous, we have 11.2 million from tuition and 1.5 from transportation. That contract actually expires on June 30th of 24. So maybe if we tell them now, we might have one by June of 25. But the last year, I think it took almost a year before, or the last contract, I should say, I think it took almost a year into the contract before they finally approved it. So I'm not sure if their processes have changed at all. These expenditures. So the state wants us to tell you about expenditures in these three categories, administrative, capital, and program. Administrative is just what it says. It's the administration of the overall district. Capital is just that. It's capital. Anything that dealing with the buildings um, or equipment costs, busing. Uh, nope, buses are in program. So program is everything else. It's all the instructional costs. It's all the busing costs to get the kids to school. So those are the three things that we're required um, by the state to present to you. And this, I think, is more beneficial, in my opinion. I will show you what I'm required to show you, but I think this tells you more. 44% of our expenditures are salaries. 20% are benefits. So that's 64% of our costs are people. We're a service industry. We don't make widgets, so that makes sense. Another 6% is our debt. 14% is our BOCES. And on that, we get a lot of aid back. As you can see, $7.2 million in BOCES, but last year, I think we were at 6.3, I think at the beginning of the year, we got almost $3 million in aid back on that. So um, that works out well um, on our behalf. Equipment is at 4%, contractual at 10, materials and supplies at 2%. The largest pieces of contractual are the contracts that we have for security. Next. So this is the way the state wants you to look at it. Program, 77%, which again, makes sense because that's what we do here. We're a teaching facility. Uh, capital at 13 and admin at 10. So within the admin um, costs are the district clerk, personnel department, undistributed, uh, which is insurance and leases uh, for the nation. Uh, the BOCES administrative expense, curriculum costs, supervisory costs, and all the benefits associated with any of the people that are in those categories yeah. is program. So this covers our legal, our security, our sexual credit, data processing, supervisory, which is all the principals, teaching, which is every single instructional person we have, exceptional education, students with disabilities, occupational ed, which is all the students that we send to BOCES, Special schools, which is a combination of Warrior Academy and our uh, schools that we run over the summer. The library, uh, computer-assisted instruction is all the technology. Uh, folks, not, not only Marcy's crew, but also the um, instructional teachers in each class or each school building that cover technology. Our attendance officers, our guidance folks, and our nurses, and our psychologists. And then it continues on. 
with our social workers, our family support liaisons, our extracurricular or co-curricular activities, which for us are the two major things, our OM and ski club. Uh, where did I go? Interscholastic <laughs> is all the athletics, that's all Chad's gang. And then uh, transportation, not only the purchasing of the buses, but also all of the staffing and the garage costs and all that. Recreation is $180,000. And what that is, is $100,000 for a new playground at Prospect for the older students, because that one is predates me being here. And this is my 13th year. So that one is pretty old over there. Um, and also some upgrades to the cafeterias in uh, both buildings and rebranding of the gym. So that's what the 180 is. And then the benefits are the benefits associated with everybody that would be in this category, which is mainly teaching staff and principals. And then the inner funds of 350 cover um, our special ed costs for summer programming and cafeteria costs because we're still not making money in there yet. Next up and finally is capital costs, which are some legal to cover uh, legal issues with purchasing lands or capital project costs, et cetera. Um, the facilities operations, so all of Rich's gang and everything that they need to operate our buildings. Um, undistributed BOCES capital expenses is, is a number that we get from BOCES for them to take care of their capital expenses. And then again, all the benefits associated with the folks that are in these uh, cost areas. And then debt service, which is what we still owe on our outstanding bonds and potential bans. Next. So what happens if the budget goes down? We go to contingent. <clears throat> we'll come back to the drawing board. We'll look at it again and say, are we gonna present the same exact budget up for vote? Or are we going to drop something out, You know, remove a program or something to decrease the amount and bring it back? Regardless, the most our tax levy could be would be the $250,000 that it is right now. So even if we drop programming, et cetera, our tax levy is not going to change. It has to remain what it was last year or no more than it was last year. Um, what that also would mean is that none of the facilities would be usable by community groups unless they're paying full costs for it. So every um, janitor or custodian or cleaner or security guard that needed to be in those facilities um, would all have to be covered by whomever is requesting to use them. All of our bus purchases and equipment purchases, we would not be able to do that. And any non-union, non-certified personnel would not have their salary increases by their contracts and any transfers to capital are removed, but this year we don't have any. That's what happens if the budget vote goes down. Next. And the vote is May 16th, which is next Tuesday, starting at noon to nine in the high school gym. And last but not least, does anybody have any questions? Fine. Easy enough. Thanks. If I could just make a note, Karen has been working on this since when? December. December. Right. So what you see now is really five to six months worth of pretty intense work. And um, I just wanted to express my gratitude for her and her team, um, but it's primarily her. So thank you. Thanks, Jeff. It would be often say, just ask us and we'll find a way to do it. And uh, we can't just find a way to do it without the funding. And Karen, even though she rolls her eyes and probably rolls them way back in her head, still always finds a way to help support the goal of the board to make sure that we can bring the programs and stuff that, for the students in the community. So. It really is a, a great job that you do, and it, it's very thankless. So uh, on behalf of the board, thank you for all your hard work and, and making us look good all the time. Thank you. What we like. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> so next we will move on to uh, public communication. Do you have anybody here? What about Title Six? I am pleased to introduce our new Title Six Director, Aaron Miller. Um, Aaron, would you like to uh, say a couple of words? Absolutely. I think the media is super excited. 
Um, I was actually able to go around the last uh, couple of days and meet a lot more people um, rather than just be kind of in my cave learning Title VI as if it's you know, my, my new baby, right? So I kind of neglected um, getting out there and really knowing everybody right away. I um, really wanted to hone in on Title VI and its, and its entirety to be able to um, do things like, you know, we did the public forum just recently, um, actually huge, huge, tremendous help by Chris to do that behind me. Um, actually, we were able to submit part two of the ESIC grant, um, part two of the grant. Um, so that was done on um, May 4th. Um, you like how she sits right over my shoulder to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, but no, I had a really tremendous um, amount of work that she did with the family this last year, um, going and submitted. Um, just a couple updates I wanted to throw out there really was um, our uh, Indigenous Parent Community, our Indian Parent Community meeting um, is actually tomorrow night. We actually have a few scheduled. Uh, tomorrow night is going to be one of them, June 14th and July 12th. They're going to be our next few as of right now. Um, so this is open to you know parents, uh, students, tribal representatives. Uh, teachers um, actually encourage as many as we can, especially parents and students, uh, to come out and at least you know check these out, um, have some input. Um, we actually do elections and vote for um, nine parent representatives uh, to, to continually meet on a monthly basis for this IPC or even just um, parent community. So really, um, that's we have a lot of movement coming. Uh, we have elections coming up. Um, we do have a lot of people that are at term. Um, so there's going to be a lot of moving parts, and so if you want to be involved, uh, especially uh, if you know some of the children in the school, um, we'd love to have them part of, you know, come out and check it out tomorrow night, or if you can't make it again, you know, um, to June 14th and July 12th, that will be our next IPC meetings. And that's kind of where we get together. We create the plan um, and our goals and presentations and trips all together as, you know, the project director myself and, and IPC um, members. Along with the chairman, and all the way down to create the plans, future plans for 23, 24, 25 as we go, and um, how we're going to spend out and allocate um, from the federal allocation. Um, so that's kind of just a real quick on, on IPC. Um, you can always reach out to me, um, Ms. Shayla Red Eye. Uh, we actually have a Title VI page. I believe it's up and running. I might have to get into it and get it more active. Um, that's if we've been a little inactive with the solid insight of the position recently. So picking up a lot um, and, and really trying to get in there and move this thing forward. Um, another thing, um, just under just some things coming up that Title VI has already been um, put in and already funded for this coming year is uh, we have actually on the 27th, we have William Krauss and uh, his community involved in performance. Uh, that'll be at the Senate Nation Museum. Um, and that's kind of an all-day event down there. They'll have food trucks, they're gonna have artists, they're gonna, have, they're gonna be opening up the um, new bomb house down there uh, that they have built. Uh, I believe all this is on this day. Um, some things also on the 20th, um, we're gonna have our lacrosse clinic. Um, that's gonna be huge. We're gonna be at Vets. Um, and we actually have a lot of local uh, names, uh, Zach Miller, Frankie Brown, Amos Wickham. Um, you know, a lot of these names that are you know from here, graduated from here, Keelan and Seneca, um, are going to be there um, representing their teams, their professional teams, their college teams. Um, and we really encourage a lot of the youth to come up. Um, we do know that there's going to be a dance, I believe, or, 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 or something at, at the 20th. Um, but we're, this is going to be two or four, so come out. You can make you can make your dance and stuff like that after. Um, but so and, and then a social. We're going to have a dance social actually from four to five afterwards. Uh, so I encourage other community members and people to come out for that. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty. I mean, we you know, Daryl Tonum is going to be coming um, this month. I believe the school has a lot of history with him and those him very well. Um, but yeah, so a lot of these things are just kind of quick updates. Um, I'll kind of keep you guys updated on a monthly basis. Um, I haven't been able to meet with the IPC yet, so tomorrow's actually going to be the first day. Doing that. Uh, so we got through the forum, we were able to submit part two. We're kind of caught up to where we need to be. Um, so I just got to get comfortable with um, everybody and keep this thing going. Awesome. Nice job. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to have a representative here.
Mr. John usually will give us some updates, so it's nice to meet you. Welcome aboard, and again, if there's anything we can do to help support, we're all here. So, well, yeah. Okay, and we will move on to <laughs> central office message. Why don't we start with Mrs. Dinichi? I have a few updates, uh, two two themes basically. Um, I just want to to recognize the things that we do here that are above and beyond um, just classroom instruction. Um, I want to thank Christina Morrison. She um, has started the Girls on the Run program here. We currently have 20 girls that will be running at the UB um, 5K race on June 4th. Um, this is a national program, but we're running it out of the Girls on the Run program out of Buffalo. Um, it comes with a curriculum about healthy eating, confidence, um, just all around good wellness in conjunction with training for a 5K. So these girls have worked extremely hard and their practice race is Tuesday, May 16th. She has a huge celebration um, just planned for them. And that's the night of the budget vote. So four o'clock at Prospect Elementary, if you wanna cheer them on. Um, and I recently was able to visit a couple classrooms and I wanna thank Mr. Morganti. He is a fifth grade classroom teacher and he's recently trying to instill the love of reading in children. So he's he's been you reading a book called Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim and doing various activities. But he doesn't just stop there. He invites people in to be guest readers and do activities with the kids. So the kids have gotten to see a variety of things. I've actually had the honor of being a guest reader and doing an activity with them. Um, in Mrs. Green's kindergarten class, she created this project and I, I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook called the Alphabet Fashion Show. <laughs> It was one of the most creative things I've ever been able to be a part of. They created their own clothing out of paper based on a letter um, from scratch, based on pictures, cutting things out, really designing it from scratch with their families. Their families were present and then they got to show it off to like catwalk music and stuff. So it was really creative and cute. Um, the second theme of my report is, yes, we're already gonna talk about next year, um, but I'm extremely proud of the work that our principals have been doing in conjunction with our teaching staff. Um, these past two weeks have been stocked with data meetings and looking at core instruction and supplement instruction for next year. Um, already looking at how to configure September and maximize instructional staff as well as instructional time. Um, with that being said, I wanna thank Nikki Beaver and Aaron Berry for creating a, a new master schedule for next year that is it includes all of the necessary components to improve teaching and learning. And I'm just super proud of them because they put numerous hours into it and it's gonna make a huge shift of what our instructional day looks like. Um, and lastly is we are gonna start a before and after school childcare program next year at Prospect Elementary. Um, it will be, we'll be utilizing an organization called Healthy Kids Programs. There'll be more details to follow. Um, Kim Oaks has been a tremendous help with that, with fire inspection and all of the good stuff that comes with putting in a child care facility before and after school. So will that be up and running by the time kids start in September? Yes. Sure. The licensing is already underway. It's actually a program that um, you guys were almost in an approval process for. I think it was in 2020. Um, it's the same exact organization. She came and did a presentation. And then COVID's over now, so yeah. we're back in business. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I know that'll help a lot of parents out because um, I know in our office, we have some parents that struggle to find daycare. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be a big help. So that's exciting. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Karen, how about you? Do you have anything more besides budget? Oh, you heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> Where do you begin? <laughs> Um, I'm working on two more grant programs, one for the cafeteria and another one for our mandated electric busing. Um, so we'll see how those go. Um, but for the cafeteria, John's been working with um, Gacquio and a couple of the local farms so we can get that started uh, come September that we'll have um, locally <laughs> produced produce and other products, milk, et cetera. Um, purchased and brought in for our cafeterias versus getting stuff from way across the state or out of state and that kind of thing. So that's going to be cool. Um, if anybody's interested in buying the buses, the auction ends tomorrow and 
the numbers from this morning to this afternoon have gone up. It's around 38,000, I think it is right now for the buses. Um, in total, there's a couple that are lower than a couple that are higher, but every now and then it'll, it'll refresh and, and there's different bids. Two of them are being bid on from somebody from Missouri. So apparently they plan on flying up to drive them down. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that closes tomorrow around noon. And other than that, it's Budget City. Thank you. We'll move on to our Board of Education message. Start with Flip, and then we'll make everybody jealous for every, all of his words of wisdom that he gives. Uh, this one's easy. Is it? Easy. Okay. No, it's to sit here and uh, reiterate on the music department and that drama film. I was in a band program way, way back when. <laughs> and it is very, um, it, it has a huge impact on it, you know, and I, I still play. So I have tenor sax, no good, but I still think we good. Try to play. But that drone program, when I was sitting here, I was like, man. You, you, the students have so much offered to them. And I was trying to think of what did I have that compares to that drone program? We used to throw paper airplanes. Uh, <laughs> closest thing they had. But I, I just, I was looking aside. It's like what the school offers, the, the, what the staff is doing, and what they're creating, and the relationship they have with the students is unbelievable. And I can only commend you and just keep on doing that, that kind of work. Um, you're doing great. Keep it up. Proud, proud to be associated with it. Ed? No, I just want to thank all the people that came out with the presentations. And then uh, also just uh, congrats to Brad for getting his award. That's all. Mm -hmm. Brad? I want to thank all the educators and teacher appreciation week. Um, thanks to the presenters and thanks to Mark for presenting. Right? <laughs> we thought there would have been a cake, but um I I'd also like to say you know, thanks to all the educators in the crowd and I'm not doing it everywhere. Um this whole week is dedicated to teachers, but um really teachers are everybody associated with children. It could be a bus driver, it could be a cleaner, um, administrators, teachers assistants, anybody you know has that that uh, that form I guess with kids, you know, to to uh, teach them something. And I just want to say thanks to them. Yes. Um uh, I'd like to say that I had the pleasure of going to Moana Junior. It was awesome. Uh, and we do have a lot of young theatrical uh, performers. Uh, and it was awesome to see how excited they were and just what a great job they did. Um, the presentations tonight are awesome because, you know, my kids are at school now and um, we kind of lose track of what we have to offer. And it's nice to be reminded of all the good things that we're doing. Um, and again, um, I know there was the chef's luncheon on Friday um, for everybody, and that's to say thank you for your hard work, even though it's just a luncheon and it, you know, it's only just a little small thing to say we appreciate you. But as a board, we do appreciate it, everyone, the whole staff. Um, and just like Gail said, it's not just teachers, um, it's everybody. It's your cleaners, your bus drivers, everybody that touches a child's life that can make a difference in a child's life. Because again, all it takes is one person to notice a kid to make a positive impact on a kid that um, sometimes goes unnoticed. So it is appreciated and we are very thankful. And again, anything we can do as a board to help let us know. And that's speaking to the students and to the staff. Um, that's why we're here. You know, it's not the pay. Believe me, it's not the pay. Uh, because we don't get paid. <laughs> so um, we're here to really help and build the community. And again, 
you know, Barry's not here, but even projects with the city, with the Nathan, that we can all come together for the community, for the students, for the staff. That's that's what we're here, and that's what we're about. So um, I'll quit rambling and we'll move on with the agenda. After this, sure. Uh, just a couple notes. Um, you know, we enter now this week into, uh, as you said, Teacher Appreciation Week. There was a uh, food helper or food service hero week or a day, which was last week, which was terrific to see. I think it's really important, um, as Mrs. Ray indicated, that you know, the board and the district really truly appreciates all of the employees because every one of the employees of our district makes um, and has a significant impact on the lives of uh, children. And no matter what your role is within the district, everyone is important. And I know if Mr. John was here, he would speak to um, what it's like being married to an educator. I had the good fortune of being married to an educator as well. And I hear her, um, what she goes through on a daily basis. Uh, I hear her when she's working with students after school, uh, tutoring in one way or another. And I think it's good for me to just always be grounded because I know she'll always tell me the truth, uh, to say the least. And um, really for all of our educators, we really appreciate them much more than we could ever uh, show with a, a luncheon. Um, but I was the recipient of many thank yous for that. So I do want to pass them on to the board that um, many of our uh, employees here were very appreciative of the luncheon that we served. Just a couple other notes. Um, you know, our administrators do an awful lot not just within the district, um, but also outside of the district. And I just wanted to recognize one of them. Um, Mrs. Dudek is heavily involved with the Parent Network of Western New York. And the Parent Network support, provides support for parents as well as other professionals that work with students with disabilities. I know Mr. Parisi is also involved um, as we have been at various fundraisers together. But uh, most recently, Mrs. Dudek has been elected as the chairperson for the board of the Parent Network. Um, as well as the chairperson of the executive committee of the board of directors. Um, she has also had the state education department here today for an uh, on-site audit of our pre-K program, which uh, from what he said was very well. Is there anything that you want to mention about the audit? No, I just want to publicly thank SALD, um, the chatter audit is Link Head Start, and Kim Holtz and the staff of HOSA. Without everything that they did, including the two hundred plus documents we uploaded to the state um, in order to get ready for today's audit, we couldn't have done what we did. But everyone did a phenomenal job, especially our four year olds that made sure that they welcomed the auditor with open arms and left. <laughs> One last thing, um, yesterday I had the opportunity to collaborate on the planning of a major um, emergency drill that we're planning for this upcoming November. Uh, and we're going to be meeting every two weeks uh, from now until November. So that'll give you some idea of the scope of this particular drill. And I just continue to be impressed that we have so many people in the community that come together. So yesterday um, in the office, we had representatives from Salamanca Fire Department, Salamanca Police Department, Seneca Nation Marshals, Cat County Emergency Services, the Sheriff's Department, and First Response, who we use for our armed security. They were all on hand to begin the planning of the event um, and determine what training is going to be necessary as we begin to escalate uh, toward that big culminating event in uh, November. So, you know that we've said in the past, uh, you know, safety and security is not in our four board goals. It's simply an expectation, and we will do everything necessary to ensure that we have the safest and securest environment for our students as well as for our staff. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations, Kristen. That's really Right. We will move on to our consent agenda. So we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Second. Motion by Brad, second by Flip. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. <clears throat> Next, under our policies, we have uh, policy 7350 and 8460. Um, so we need a motion to approve both of those policies. Motion. Second. Motion by Dale, second by Pat. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on any of the policies? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Item seven under new business is our contract with Erie One Boces. So we need a uh, motion to approve the contract and the payment, not to exceed $29,464.92. For the high school faculty. Second. Motion by Dale, second by Brad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Item B is the creation of several positions, which I will not read, uh, but are attached to the agenda. So we need a motion to create the position. Motion. Second. Motion by Pad. Second by Flip. Are there any questions on any of these positions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Item C is the abolishment of positions. So we need a motion to abolish the positions with the Virginia agenda. Second. Motion by Dale. Second by Brad. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Item eight is our personnel consent agenda. So item eight B, we need to approve the personnel consent agenda. I need a motion. Motion. Motion by Ted, second by Flip. Are there any questions on the personnel consent agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, motion carried. And do we have any more to do like the interviews? Yeah. We do. Am I reading it right? She kept saying you're right. She did. Um, do we have any of our principals? All right. Let's go. All right. So it is my pleasure to recommend Chelsea McFever for tenure as an elementary education teacher. Um, before joining the Salamanca team, Chelsea um, was a substitute in several districts throughout Western New York. Um, then she joined our team as a uh, teaching assistant for one year, su supporting multiple grade levels. And then after a year as a teaching assistant, a first grade uh, classroom position opened up and Chelsea interviewed and was a successful candidate for that first grade teaching position. Um, so this is her fourth year in one of our first grade classrooms. And Chelsea is someone that she conveys to me that she knew from a very young age that she um, wanted to be an educator. So she would volunteer in classrooms and would go into her cousin's classroom and help. And her summers were spent in various family members' classrooms as well. So um, Chelsea is a teacher that builds strong relationships with her students and she gets to know them very well. Her expectations are very clear. Um, she is always one that she greets students um, in the main entrance of the school every morning. She supports our before school programming, after school programming, very hardworking. We're fortunate to have her and congratulations to Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, I know, is there anyone else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is a great pleasure and honor to recommend ranking senior to Jen Pyra as reading specialist, uh, while serving as Sonic Intermediate Principal and formally and observe, formally and informally observing Jen, I have found her to be compassionate and committed to our students. She collaborates with her colleagues and has students' best interests at heart by providing differentiated instruction to best support their individual learning needs. Ms. Pyra has a strong understanding of intervention services and is consistent with her approach to teaching reading. She has routines and procedures in place that create an environment that is conducive to learning and support for our students. Tyra's passion for children and commitment to lifelong learning does not go unnoticed. Congratulations, Jen. Any... Oh, yeah. oh. All right. We do have two other, um, but we will make sure that we acknowledge them when we see them again. I know Stephen's. Uh, did send a note saying she was unable to come tonight, but she wanted to personally thank all uh, us uh, or all of the board for granting tenure. She did it. It's a great honor and privilege to work at the high school that she graduated from in 19 something. Uh, if she says, please don't do the math. So uh, she is very appreciative. 
I won't do the math either because yeah. I didn't do it ahead of me. So, uh, <laughs> that's very good. so I'm like 29. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for coming to the board meeting. That's great. You guys can put a face for the name because, like I said, sometimes my kids are out of school, so we lose track of these kids. So thank you for coming. And congratulations to everybody. And with that, we have our board information reports. Uh, we have our policy meetings, our capital project summary, and our enrollment data, our transportation data, and again, our upcoming events. As Mrs. McGarra mentioned, uh, May 16th is our annual budget vote uh, in board member election. So please come out and vote. We can't tell you how to vote, uh, but I just am encouraging everybody to please come out and vote. We do have a finance committee meeting also on the 16th at 5 p.m. Uh, and again, our busy night high school band and chorus concert at the high school, uh, the art show. The steam fair, uh, and then May 18th is our third grade concert. Uh, so please, everybody, come out and see all the great stuff that our students are doing or attend our concerts or do as much as you can. Um, and that is all I have. And with that, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion. Second. Motion by Philip, second by Gail. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a great week.